Yes. So you don't get any profit from door sales, but you still pay them out of your own money. Is no. That correct? No. I get paid from the bar. Okay. So the bar pays me to put on the gig. I don't have to pay my comics. I could take all of that money because it's my time for organising and all my gear coming in. But I thought that's not helping the scene, that's not helping the new comics come through. And so I do it. But as an event, it's really successful. So I've got Reese Matthewson coming in on uh, headlining on Monday. Uh, I've got Paul Douglas from Hamilton and Pax. These are all guys who do pro nights at the Classic. Who get, they're, they're paid comics, they're professionals. And they choose to come to my show because they love coming there because it's a great environment and they have fun. So this is just another design on how to run an event. You don't need to you know, go, oh, how do you do an event? Oh, okay, I'm going to do that. You can look at it and figure out your own event. All of us here have had ideas for events. Hands up if you've had an idea for an event. What's your idea? My idea. Yeah. I'll put on a few. <laughs> yeah. What's your favourite one? Um, doing shows that no one listens to around here. <laughs> like, hardcore. Um, like, it's like punk and metal put together. Like, those oh. kind of shows. Yeah, like Screamer. Kind of like Screamer? Yeah, it's... I don't like that term. <laughs> <laughs> Music. Really, really, really hard event to put on. Uh, I did music events for seven years. It's If you're in the band, it's even harder because you put all the time in, you put all the energy in, you go out, you hire lights, you fly everywhere, you social media, everything, you try and get on all the radio stations, nobody wants to listen to you, and you go and do a show and you get six people turning up. Music's really, really hard. When we were doing our tours, uh, we had a, our most successful tour was 2009 New Zealand. We did a, a, a New Zealand schools tour. It was right on the launch of our album. Our album made New Zealand Top 40. You'll never have heard of our band. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, but here's how music works. You go and do one show and you play to 600 people and it's incredible. You go to a new city the next day and you play to two. That's how it works. Music is hard. Really hard in New Zealand. So if you're thinking of doing that, I'd really strongly advise think of more creative ways to do what you do. Because what's currently working in the scene is not working. So yeah, get excited. <laughs> Be creative. Uh, let's move on from this boring slide. Advice during your study. Yay! Uh, get A's early. Um, and that's easier said than done, I know, but it really is. You set that benchmark now. Get in there, get the reading done, get good marks, and then you become addicted to them. I, I thought I was an average student coming into uni and I was really, really worried. So I did all my prep. I'm not going to say I did all the readings because there's a lot of readings. I'm not going to say I even bought all the textbooks because I was poor. <laughs> but I just tried. Um, biggest, biggest thing that, that helped me that I learned later on in study was you get an assignment, your tutor or your lecturer goes over the information on that assignment. As soon as they're doing that, your brain is firing off ideas. And you're starting to think, yeah, I could do that, yeah, I could do that, I could go this way, I could go that way. Brain dump all of that on a piece of paper. Because you are not going to go home, I guarantee you, you're not going to go home and start working on it that day. Because you've got four weeks. <laughs> what you're going to do is wait three weeks and go, oh, hell, that assignment's due in one week. I should probably start it. Doesn't matter how much you think you are ahead of that, some of you will be a lot better than I was. But brain dump first. So that when you come back to it and you've got that one week to go, you're looking at some ideas. And it makes it a hell of a lot easier kicking into that assignment from there. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, yeah, the beginning of your degree is significantly more forgiving than the end of your degree. It only gets harder. And I mean that in a good way. Because it means that you're still being challenged. If it's getting easier by the end of it, just flunk out and go and do a doctorate. Just, you know, go and do something that's challenging. This should be challenging. It should be challenging you all, and that's a good thing. But if you do the, the prep first, then it's much easier as you go. You start getting those A's early, you get addicted to them. You get that B+, plus, and you're disappointed. Just don't say it too loud, because the guy behind you who got a C-, minus and is stoked, yeah, he'll be annoyed at you. Um, be mates with your lecturers. I, I found this really helpful because I got myself into a couple of situations where I was late getting an assignment in. I had some uh, tragedies in the family which meant that um, I had to delay some exams. And I was given more time 
because I had a good relationship with my lecturers. It doesn't, what did I put here? Oh no, I had it in my other one. Um, it doesn't mean that they will break the rules for you, but the rules can most definitely be bent, and that will only be bent if you're on a good relationship with your lecturers. The best thing I can say is go to the lectures, go to all the tutorials, uh, and ask questions if you don't know. If you've got a draft and you're not sure about it, send it to your lecturer. They'll go through it and tell you if you're on the right or wrong direction. And it is so much easier to change it when you early when you know you're on the wrong direction. I got one D in my entire paper here, and that was solely because I didn't give my draft through, and I was completely on the wrong direction. I had just misread the entire assignment. So it was, it was written well, but it just didn't answer the question. So that's, yeah, something to learn. Um, apply for all the grants and scholarships early and consistently. I never did this. I found out that my friend Marika, who's possibly coming in to see you, has Marika been in? No, no, no. Not yet. no she might be coming in, she might not be. But she'd been getting all the grants every year, and I was a better student than her. I think she racked up like two grand worth of grants over three years. Kate, can I just add to that? Um, one of our students, who is now in her third year, Emily, um, I presented a fellowship to class. Um, it was for uh, female students under 24. Um, and she was the only one in class who applied. Um, the, it was a national award, and, uh, and she got it. Um, and she's now in Idaho, and the value of that scholarship is about 50000 New Zealand dollars. So she's got entire fees, accommodation, food, everything paid for, um, for a year. Do the research, find the scholarships, apply for them even if you don't know if you'll get them. A lot of them you have to have a B plus average. Well, who knows what you're going to end up with. So just do it. Just apply for it. Um, I've got here, know the direction you want to take after your study. That's not necessarily, not exactly where you want to go, but understand what the industry is. And that's what I'm going to try and help you with today. Uh, if you're going in for events, understand that there's significantly different portions and different places within the events industry that you can go. And understanding which one of those is better suited to you. So that's just starting to, starting to think those things, starting to have a bit of an idea. I don't want everybody going, I want to be a wedding planner. Because that is what 90% of the girls did when we started our degree. They all wanted to be wedding planners. I can guarantee you that none of them are winning. Winning planners. <laughs> That's probably the best decision they ever made. <laughs> what did I learn in my degree that mattered? <laughs> Knowing how to write professionally. I went in and graduated with a Bachelor of Communications and a double major in Event Management and Public Relations. Some of you are doing PR majors, some of you are doing Event majors. I decided I wanted to do both solely because I wanted to be an overachiever. That was it. I wanted to be. I wanted to be that guy, and because I wanted to prove to myself that I could do it. Guess what? I did it. Do I work in PR? No. Do I use my PR skills? Yes. It was really, really helpful. Uh, I get thrown details like um, salmon in a press release on this. If I hadn't done the PR side, I would have been like, what? I have no idea how to do a press release. So that was uh, a fantastic thing that I took away, was knowing how to write professionally. Also, uh, understanding professional documents such as feasibility studies, operation plans, production managers, marketing plans, press releases, etc. I use these every month. Every time we do a new event, or if it's a brand new event, you need to do a feasibility study. And your employers expect you to know how to do this and to know what it is. You don't need to know it exactly. They'll normally have a template. If they don't have a template, go online and get a template. If you haven't found any templates online that you like, contact Nina and say, hey, do you have a, a feasibility study template that I can use? I did this a month ago, and I got one. Um, she got back to you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I got that. It was for an idea that I was working on, and I just I couldn't find it in my files that I'd saved from the ones that I used here. So it's understanding how to use those documents and what those documents are because it's just really helpful. Every company and organization does it differently. So what they consider a report is very different to what we consider a report academically. So they will always have either templates or previous year's ones that you can just go in, delete everything that's in it, replace it with the new information. Um, but 
if you can get in there and kick ass and do it straight away without even having to worry, and your boss is like, oh, this is really good, you'd be like, oh, thank you. <laughs> they don't need to know, just to keep impressing them. Uh, knowing how to work in a team with people you don't like. <laughs> We've all had it. You've got three years here. You are going to work in teams with people that you absolutely can't stand. You're going to work in teams where people send you information for part of a group report that sucks. I remember, I'm not going to name names because you won't know anyway, but I did a, um, uh, what was it? It was a big report here in my third year. It was me, a good friend of mine, and another girl. And she, the other girl was really, really late in getting me the information for our report. It was due the next day. Um, she finally sent it to me and I read through it and just went, this is terrible. This is absolutely terrible. It does not work. So I had the ethical question of whether I leave it in and get a lower mark because this person just didn't get it. Or do I rewrite everything she's done? <coughs> I'm an overachiever, I rewrote everything she did, I was up until about 3 a.m. finishing that. But then we had to put in some information uh, when our report was completed saying that her part had been rewritten because it wasn't fair on her to take an A when the other two of us had done all the work. But you're going to get that in the real world. You're going to work with people who are just difficult. Being young, people are going to treat you differently because you don't know anything because you're young. Oh, you've got a degree. Have you got any experience? No. Huh, I know it better than you do. They may be right, they may be wrong, doesn't matter, you need to smile, you need to suck it up, and you need to deal with it. Because it's all about getting the job done. Very, very important that. It sucks, just suck it up. You need to learn how to get along with people, and this communication degree will most definitely help you with that. Wait until your later papers. Are they still doing the interpersonal and intrapersonal? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, great papers, really interesting. Um, work to deadlines and nail them. You're going to work in organisations where there are a team of people who are completely unorganised and don't hit those deadlines. Don't be that person. Get your deadlines nailed and then if anything hits the fan, working at council, massive organisation. And the amount of just infighting that goes on between different groups, different departments, is completely different to a small organisation. A small organisation, five to ten people in it, everyone does everything to get the job done. Council, I'm not doing that because it's not my job. That's marketing team's job. And so you wait. And so you wait again. And so you wait three weeks to get a brief through that was supposed to be due three weeks ago, and there's nothing you can do. Because that's marketing's team. And that's working in a big organisation. Things get done incredibly slowly. It's very frustrating. Once again, suck it up. Advise in the project team meetings, advise your managers, I've completed this, I'm waiting on this, I can't do anything. And they'll go, yep, yeah, cool, you've done your part. That's the difference. Council's great for some things, bloody frustrating for others. Um, know how to conduct research. Now this is not just through your, your research papers, this is just understanding if you need to find something and it needs to be relevant, knowing how to do that and do it well. You'll do it all the time and you'll love it. I've already done that one, so I told you it was early when I did this. Uh, social media. Enough said. Just, you know how to do it. You know how important it is. You're going to be thrown, especially in your, your early jobs of event management, oh, take over this. Can you do the Facebook for this? Can you do the Twitter for this? Even if you like it or you don't like it, you need to have an understanding of how that works. It's really important. Um, I'd say start playing with groups. Start playing with uh, just creating pages that you manage. They can be absolutely crap. I go to a fit club out in, um, uh, where is it, Mount Wellington, and I'm good mates with all the trainers there. And I got talking to them over the weekend uh, when we were doing an expo. And I said, hey, why don't we create a page that is um, a private page for all of the trainers, which is like, you know, guilty pleasure. So anytime we go off and we do, you know, go and have McDonald's or we, we go and eat badly instead of, um, you know, whatever's on our training regime, we chuck it on there so we don't feel guilty. It's a crap idea. But it's creating and managing a page. So it's just having all of these different things working on at the same time. If you've got 40 pages that you're managing, which is a huge amount, that is also 40 networks where you can market and advertise to. So it's another idea as well. of Just different ways to promote your event, like your, um, your music site, uh, your music events that you do down at the end. Create 
significant pages on different music sites, try and pull all of those people from international sites, whatever, and you can start advertising and marketing through there. It's not going to be crazy successful, but it's another area and another way of, of promoting your events that you're working on. Oh, I missed it. What's the industry like? <laughs> I graduated about three years ago. In those three years, I've worked four different jobs. My contract for council is expiring in the next month. I've been asked to apply for another role within council, uh, senior operations coordinator, which I've applied for and I've got an interview on Wednesday. Be prepared to do short-term contract roles. It sucks, but that's how the industry is. There's a huge amount of contracting work out there. It's also a great way to get into different companies and get a good breadth and depth of the type of injuries that you've worked in, uh, industries and organisations within an events perspective that you've worked in. I've done not-for-profit, I've done uh, very high-end corporate, and now I'm doing um, community, uh, community with the event job that I've just done, because we were in the community development arts and culture, so we did all of the um, Māori and community events, and now I'm looking at going into um, more mainstream council events, which is uh, music and parks, movies and parks, all of that type of stuff. So that's a really good, for me, it was a great understanding of just the different ways that events work. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of that. Yeah, lots of applicants. So the best thing that I can advise you is while you're studying, get some real event experience. Go and volunteer for stuff, yeah. What do you mean by real experience? Well, for you yourself, you've already done some events. So that's what I consider real event experience. So getting on a team, going and doing some free work, going and doing some volunteer work. Um, go to events and start looking at it from an event management perspective as opposed to an audience perspective. They're two different very ways of looking at things. So you can go to an event and be like, man, look at how long that toilet queue is. That's not good enough. They should have had more toilets. Or they should have uh, coordinated the lines to the toilets better. Um, man, that's not safe. Why is it not safe? I look at those kids going over there, they're going to hurt themselves. That's a major issue from an event perspective, and they should have thought of